as architects, we are conditioned to kind of deal in potentials. You respond to the rawness of, of, of these buildings, but there's still a sort of slight terror in approaching them. And so for tenants, I think the process is almost self-selecting. We end up with really interesting people in these buildings because, again, they're dealing in raw potentials. It's a raw volume to be, to be shaped and, and moulded. When we first came into this building, being Stanbeth House, and I just looked and I thought, I could see exactly what upstairs was going to be like. I saw that it had a raised area with a mezzanine, and I went down here and I saw this horrible pit of a basement. And I, I could imagine this, I could imagine this bar and this back bar. These buildings in the state that we came to them, the basement, which is now the most beautiful and delicate and luxurious of dens, has uh, you know, started life more or less as a sort of underwater rubbish dump filled with mud and debris. With this building in particular, Nats and I spent just hundreds of hours sitting around, bouncing ideas around, and a lot of designing on the fly. We, we, you know, we got down here and, and we started working on it, and the, the wall behind us here is, is very similar to what it was when we, when we walked in. It was a big leap to take it to here, but I think this basement in particular is one of the nicest little corners of, of Auckland City. We had a walk through the area, and as we were walking through to find space for advertising agency, we saw an empty car park and said to the guys at the time, we'd like to convert that into a bar. Um, and in true Cooper & Co fashion, they said, well, you'd need to take the building next door. So we worked very closely with them to say, well, why don't we knock a hole through the wall and convert that space into what in effectively has become three distinct retail concepts, all within the Britomite precinct. With great help from the developers and um, the architects, we decided that we would open something that embraced heritage that I don't think Auckland ever thought it had and I think pretty much one of the areas that it really instills that Aucklanders are moving ahead with modern spaces but respecting the heritage. We've been here right from the start we came in when there was nothing else here. The floors had holes in them, everything was quite derelict then. There was no electricity, there was a, a few dead animals, rats and things, but um, I mean, the building was fantastic to start with, so we had a really good space. So we just sort of enhanced it. One day Peter Cooper came into Maid and thought that it would be a great idea to put windows in the back of the stores. Lo and behold, you'd take a sledgehammer to it and insert a little sliver of glass and now all of a sudden, uh, and look right through a city block, right through a building and out, you know, through a retail store, through all of those jewels and beautiful pieces of clothing. Uh, and out the other side into a garden. We could see into the Britomart Country Club and they could see into the store. Uh, it's great atmosphere at night with the chandeliers going, which we leave on until they've closed. And uh, all the people in the bar get to see into the shop as well. There's a real kind of complexity there that I find extremely exciting. I mean, uh, I think that that city making at its most exhilarating. We were the first tenant in the whole Britomart development and we really kind of you know, fell in love, I suppose, it's not too um, kind of strong a word, with the vision that, that Cooper & Company had. We started off, uh, there's a great old building across towards Key Street, it's called the Northern Steamship Company building, and the first business we did was called the Northern Steamship Company. It's a really good, comfortable bar, and um, you know, it's a big site, directly opposite the port, it's a great, beautiful building. You know, you could say that space is the last luxury, really. That, that having a room like this, for example, with a great deal of volume in it, uh, very hard to build these days. For a good couple of years, we were kind of the lone white elephant in amongst a sea of construction. Now you're seeing um, the kind of fruits of all the, all the careful, I suppose, selection of tenants. And there's such a good quality and good mix of tenants down here that there's a critical mass being achieved, you know, and everyone's feeding off each other and everyone's feeding off each other's success, which is fantastic. That's, you know, that's what a precinct really should work towards and that's what this place does. Pretty much just getting busier and busier. Uh, with all the new uh, retail, new bars and restaurants coming to Britomart, it's just fantastic. It's bringing more people down, it's becoming more of a hub, it's becoming more of a destination these days rather than just coming down for a drink and then shooting off somewhere else. From there, you know, we saw things develop and, you know, we took our time, but this little bar, Old Smith, was the next place that we kind of came across. 
There was another tenancy here, we took it over. I mean, it's a really small, comfortable, cute, boutique little bar, you know. And then uh, just recently, in the last six months, we opened up across the road there, Shaky Isles, which is a, uh, a little coffee company. And what you're seeing in Britomart is the early stage stuff was probably more night orientated with the mix now of, of, of retail and commercial tenants with big new buildings coming up online like the Ernst & Young and the Westback building. It really gives a, um, a market for those day orientated businesses. So we were pretty comfortable by you know, last year committing to doing a Shaky Isles in here as well. Abisu was, um, was inspired by a number of um, concepts seen in the US and in through Europe of taking great Japanese cuisine, but just giving it a, a modern twist. So once again, you have the beautiful backdrop of heritage buildings with comfortable leather seating, incredible food, and a DJ playing. As you look into the kitchen, see the guys rolling sushi and a barman preparing a lychee martini. So um, that experience in the Japanese is not hard to sell to anyone, but having a unique Japanese concept that trades commercially well is a little bit more difficult, and Abisu's hit the perfect spot there. Hey, Leon. How are you, mate? Good to see you. Good. <laughs> Good. 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 Yeah, Good. Alex. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Well, that Brutamart's looking absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank it? you. Yeah, well, it's been a long time in the making, you know, so I think we're there now. So we're, we're happy to have it ready for Rugby World Cup, basically. Yeah, well, the thing that's amazed us is how quickly Auckland's transformed into what yeah. you can be proud of as a yeah. central city and the Britomart, yeah. and then bookended by uh, the Wynyard Quarter as just an amazing uh, waterfront now. The Nathan Club was really our attempt to extend this um, hospitality in terms of what is Britomart, and we thought it would be a way that we could increase the branding awareness of Britomart if we had our own club because we knew all the bars and restaurants were going to be jam-packed. We thought we've well, extended um, club membership, uh, an invitation club membership to really friends, family, business associates and the tenants here that we could all really have a place we could call our own club because it's, it's fun. I think, you know, when you have, a, I think we've got about 500 members just to start with instantly. And when you have that sort of base group, you can then perhaps create events here and do things that people want. Richard Johnson and I worked together on Westpac's headquarters in Sydney. It's a 74,000 square meter tenancy. Richard just has an incredible vision for what I believe is creating iconic buildings um, that have humility but have that semblance of, of actually feeling part of the city. A lot of that is, is Richard Johnson's um, uh, ability. And the beautiful thing about you know, Richard, he's got a musical background as well as a fine arts background, in addition to being an architect, as you know, and um, the way he sort of thinks about that facade is he wanted the facade to match, obviously, the heritage sort of line, but he's also thought about it in terms of the, um, uh, really the rhythm of uh, all the pieces, so there's a musical score that could be written to what he's designed. Having East 1 and East 2 open has increased the daily population down here of by about two and a half thousand people, which is a huge boost for the precinct as a whole. We looked at a number of sites across Auckland and, and chose to be part of the Britomart development for a number of reasons. It was very obvious to us when we looked back at the history of the site and saw how Britomart was instrumental to the, the city's history and how it formed as a trading point and everything else. That really aligned very much with the principles of uh, Westpac New Zealand and how long we've been here in New Zealand. Uh, that combined with the regeneration of Britomart and how for its retail offering it was expanding, the bars, the, the services that would be able to be offered to Westpac staff was a big part of uh, why we chose down here and not be necessarily out on some limb somewhere else in Auckland. Clearly, uh, with 1,750 people in the building for Westpac as employees, 
uh, considerations to how close we were to public transport, uh, the ferry terminals uh, and other amenities for, the, uh, for individuals getting to and from work was really critical in our selection and obviously Britain Mart aligned really, really well with that. We're on top of the train station and it's amazing the take up from our staff that you'll see almost 70% of our staff come up through the escalator into our building. Well, the interesting thing, you know, based on data from Council, is that there's more people uh, going in and out of the train station um, below the East Building than through the main entry now. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, it is fascinating. And I mean, it's obviously um, that they want to actually come out here and walk this way to go there rather than come out there. So It's a natural migration. It is. It is. It was now there's so much more movement, there's so many people coming through. You had a, a performer on the grass there. And I yeah, that's it was right. just. Uh, well, that's the live theatre element, which is so fantastic because it's not manufactured now. That's right. It's people choosing to yes. you know, strut their stuff here. Yeah. Clearly, as it's Westpac's head office, we get a number of visitors to our building, which we're very, very proud of. And we get wonderful comments, not only on our own fit out and, and our own home as such, but just the precinct and how it's been developed as well. It sits really, really well naturally within, uh, within the Auckland landscape now. It's got some wonderful architectural features as a building outside of our own tenancy with the, the whole atrium. It's a living, growing wall. And, and one of the things that you'll see as part of the atrium is everybody's looking across at each other in the buildings from office floor to office floor. And he wanted to create this energy of, you know, what can I see, what's happening? So you're not in a box. You're always getting this kind of delightful surprises these little angles, um, these shapes. So the inside of the buildings become just as important as the outside, but the atrium brings that alive. It connects it. So when we talk about the carving in our lobby, we're very, very proud of that. And that goes back to a, a real genuine willingness from Westpac to, to work alongside the iwi and invite them to contribute a piece into our space. We work very closely with the iwi uh, carts, the carver. The log itself is 4,000 years old. We went as a team to, with the iwi to the Dargaville Forest to get that, to then commission it to watch its progress as it was carved over a, a seven month period. With Maui on the top, it represents um, the founding of New Zealand and that carving really sits well with us in that space. Ernst & Young having been in uh, Shortland Street for you know, 35 years uh, meant that when it came time to looking at a change it was a, a really significant decision to make. So you know, when we made the decision probably five or six years ago now, you know, given the state of Britomart at that stage, you know, I think we had to believe in the vision for Britomart and for the development that was going to take place and people would still have regarded it as a bold decision given you know, the history that Britomart had had in more recent times. Uh, and with our long-standing history in, in Auckland, we were obviously attracted by Britomart, uh, an area that has had you know, enormous historical importance uh, to Auckland over generations, uh, a place that's always been a significant part of business, trade and transportation. So from our perspective, you know, one of the real pluses was the opportunity to come here you know, closer to the three hubs around transportation, so rail, ferry and bus. Uh, and what that would mean in terms of convenience, you know, both for our clients and our people. The full service professional used to always drive to the client, you know, that became the trend, it was too hard for the client to get into town, so you drive to your client. But now, if you have this attractive environment, your client wants to come here, and you can provide them with valet car parking, so it's like a seamless process. It's a much more powerful offering than you having to send your people out to them. So there's a whole lot of things that feed off each other.